In today's show, Bitcoin ends the week on the edge as the S&P 500 officially enters the bear market. In today's show, I'll be breaking down the latest technical analysis. And as shared here, it is official. The S&P 500 has entered the bear market. You can see it negative 20%. And as shared by blockchain backer, another wacky day in the stock market, Dow Jones negative 500 early in the day, then recovers it all and closes above eight. Bitcoin just still teetering on the edge and as plan c shares being able to change your opinion is a sign of intelligence if the crypto market was in a bubble i would say 25 to 27,500 is the bitcoin bottom but there is a decent probability that macro factors drag us down to 22 to 24 thousand dollars significant black swan 15 to 20 thousand becomes a possibility and as alex gladstein shares bitcoin was eight thousand dollars just two years ago two thousand five years ago five dollars ten years ago today in the early innings of some of the worst macroeconomic conditions in 50 years is back at thirty thousand dollars could it go down a lot from here absolutely but context and history matter zoom out and reflect also in today's show central bankers bellow bitcoin on el salvador's Bitcoin Beach. Central bankers and financial regulators from 44 countries visited Bitcoin Beach to learn about financial inclusion and banking the unbanked because Bitcoin is good for inclusion. That's right. So as the orange pilling continues, here's the central bankers screaming Bitcoin. Pretty cool, eh? Also in today's show, top crypto analyst says historically accurate metric, which signals the Bitcoin bottom could be near. As he tweets here, Bitcoin RSI has reached March 2020 levels. And he also goes on to share that the RSI is now entering a period that has historically preceded outsized returns on investment for long-term investors. Previous reversals from this area include January 2015, December 2018, and March 2020, all bear market bottoms. Also in today's show, MicroStrategy says they have no intention to sell their Bitcoin, according to their company, CFO, quoting him here, at this time, we do not have any intention to sell. There are no scenarios that I am aware of in which we would sell. And quoting Michael Saylor, in a global bear market, there is no place to hide, but there is one place to stand. Hashtag Bitcoin. Also in today's show, Trader predicts crypto market will mimic the 2018 bear season and shares how high the Bitcoin price could go before nuking lower. Quoting the analyst here, something like this would make sense for me. More people getting bullish on the bearish retest of $35,000 to $40,000 and then price nuking lower. Also in today's show, we'll be taking a look at the overall crypto market. All this plus so much more in today's show. Here are the News Alerts. I drop a brand new episode every single day. The goal is to get to 100,000 subs. If you like getting that crypto, be sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to turn on all notifications to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every single day, including weekends just like this. And today's episode is brought to you by BlockFi. They have a special promo they're running right now in honor of Bitcoin Pizza Day. That's right. Here's how it works. Buy $21 or more of Bitcoin and you get a slice of one BTC. All I need to do is make that purchase between now and the end of Sunday, which is tomorrow by midnight. And by doing so, you can qualify to win a slice of a Bitcoin. Once you do, make sure to post your proof. As you can see, people doing right here. Done. Just bought some BTC. Now also note that BlockFi is the number one leading provider of financial products and services for crypto investors and the number one platform to buy, sell, and earn crypto. So go ahead and use my referral link in the description right down below and let's start stacking those sats shall we all right welcome back to another episode of crypto news alerts how's it going crypto fam hope you're enjoying your saturday i'm your host jv bitcoin struggled to recover its latest losses on may 21st after wall street trading provided zero respite that's right right here you're looking at the bitcoin one hour candle chart data from coin telegraph markets pro and trading view showed bitcoin trading and dipping below twenty eight thousand seven hundred into the weekend subsequently adding around five hundred dollars down almost five percent from the previous days thirty thousand seven hundred dollar highs bitcoin looked firmly ranged bound at the time of this recording after the U.S. stocks saw a volatile final trading day of the week. Now, the S&P 500 managed to reverse after initially falling at the open. Nonetheless, confirmed bear market tendencies trading at 20% below its highs from last year. As pointed out right here, the S&P 500 has officially entered a bear market, and you can see that 20% decline here in this chart. And as blockchain backer shares here, another wacky day in the stock market, Dow Jones negative 500 early in the day, then recovers it all and closes plus eight. Bitcoin still just teetering 
on the edge. Meanwhile, various other sources have called for Bitcoin to fall once again in a manner similar to last week's capitulation event. In fact, continuing the conservative macro outlook, fellow Twitter commentator Plan C argued that external shifts could still bring Bitcoin down significantly from the current levels. As he shares on crypto Twitter, being able to change your opinion is a sign of intelligence. If the crypto market was in a bubble, I would say 25 to 27,500 is the Bitcoin bottom, but there is a decent probability that macro factors drag us down to 22 to $24,000 significant black swan 15 to 20,000 becomes a possibility now beyond stocks the US dollar currency index was consolidating after a strong retracement from 20 year highs that's right and with 10 days left until the end of the month bitcoin risk may 2022 being the worst in terms of returns in its history that's right data from on chain analytics resource CoinGlass showed month-to-month -month returns currently totaling negative 22% for Bitcoin, the largest retreat of any year except 2021's negative 35%. So 2022, the collective figures confirmed, was also the worst performing first five months of the year for Bitcoin since 2018. So there you have it. And as Alex Gladstein shares here, Bitcoin was $8,000 two years ago, $2,000 five years ago, $5 10 years ago. Today, in the early innings of some of the worst macroeconomic conditions in 50 years, it's at $30,000. Could it go down a lot from here? Absolutely. But context and history matter. Zoom out and reflect. That's right. When in doubt, Zoom out. And before I break down next to the day, central bankers Bello Bitcoin and El Salvador's Bitcoin Beach. And I share the latest updates of what's going on between them and Nigel Bokele. But first, let's take a quick look at the overall crypto market. As you can see, Bitcoin Ether, many of the major alts currently correcting. Back in the red, Bitcoin down 3% for the day, trading just above $29,200. We have Ether down 3.2%, trading back under $2,000, while Binance Coin, XRP, Cardano, Solana, and Avalanche all correcting. And in the red, but all right, now let's break down our next story of the day. The orange pilling adventure in El Salvador continues. In this video, you can see 44 central bankers and financial delegates from emerging markets from all around the world shouting Bitcoin while posing for a photo in El Zante, El Salvador, which I shared with you in the intro of the show. Now, it seems that by day three of El Salvador's financial inclusion conference, the central bankers were warming up to Satoshi Nakamoto's innovation, enjoying a trip. To Bitcoin Beach. El Zante is the home of Bitcoin in El Salvador, an iconic destination for Bitcoin enthusiasts. It birthed the movement that led to El Salvador proclaiming Bitcoin as legal tender in 2021, being the first country or nation state to do so. And Nicholas Berti told Cointelegraph that the bankers visited El Zante to learn from the Bitcoin Beach team on Thursday, May 19th. Berti told Cointelegraph that the sentiment towards Bitcoin was super good and that nothing beats the experience of using Lightning to discover the potential of Bitcoin, and in a nod to Bitcoin adoption around the world, shared the following, multiple central bankers said, I should meet their team in their country. Now, the central bankers from countries including Paraguay, Ghana, Egypt, descended on the town to spend Satoshis and interact with locals, including some minor celebrities. The bankers met with Mama Rosa, one of the first vendors to accept Bitcoin, and El Zante back in 2019 to buy pupusas. As shared here, the world-famous Mama Rosa and her son helping central bankers use Bitcoin to buy the best pupusas in El Salvador. Now, one Bitcoiner shared that they helped a central banker buy a coconut from an unbanked local at Bitcoin Beach in El Zante using Bitcoin and President Nigel Bokele also shared a series of photos of the bankers with their smartphones out showing El Chivo wallets and their lightning invoices. It's also important to note that the conference for the bankers would tackle financial inclusion and improving financing for small and medium sized businesses. Mention of Bitcoin appeared in the event's official publication and pre conference tweets. However, an interesting fact the Alliance of Financial Inclusion, an event partner, did not even disclose that Bitcoin was on its event agenda. Why are they keeping it secret? And for the Central Bank of Paraguay, whose delegate was present, conversations about Bitcoin became as a surprise in the world's first country to make Bitcoin legal tender. The Paraguayan Central Bank released an official statement on May 16th, declaring the following. The meeting's focus had no relation to cryptocurrencies or similar. The Paraguay Central Bank does not intend to discuss cryptocurrencies in said environment or meeting, yet in the candid shot shared on social media, from the El Shivo branding to the Bitcoin Beach t-shirts, to the Lightning Network demonstrations, and even the cries of Bitcoin, Bitcoin was clearly 
front and center. Now, which countries around the world do you think will be next to adopt Bitcoin as legal tender? Following El Salvador and the Central African Republic. Let me know your honest thoughts in the comments right down below. And before I break down next way of the day, top crypto analyst says historically, this accurate metric signals that a Bitcoin bottom could be near. But first, let's take a quick look at the overall crypto market cap sitting at $1.25 trillion with $66 billion in volume in the past 24 hours. The Bitcoin dominance on the climb at 44.6% with the Ether dominance on the decline at 19%. And checking out the top 100 cryptocurrency gainers in the past 24 hours, you can see Phantom leading the pack up 2% for the day, trading at 36 cents, followed by Kava up 1%, trading at $2.61, and Pax Gold up 0.3%, trading at $1,854. And checking out the top 100 cryptocurrency gainers for the past week, you can see Kava leading the pack up 30%, Monero up 27.7%, while UST and Luna are the biggest losers for the week. Go figure. And checking out one of my favorite indicators, Indicators is the Crypto Greed and Fear Index. Shows were currently rated a 13 out of 100 in Extreme Fear. Yesterday a 13, last week a 9, and last month a 27 in Fear. And if you're not familiar with the Crypto Greed and Fear Index, Extreme Fear can be a sign. Investors are too worried. That could be a great buying opportunity, aka BTFD, buy that freaking dip. And when investors are getting too greedy, that means the market is due for a correction. But all right, now let's break down our next story of the day. A widely followed crypto strategist is looking at one crucial metric with a history of accurately calling Bitcoin bottoms. Synonymous trader Rec Capital tells his 300,000 Twitter followers that Bitcoin's relative strength index, better known as the RSI, is reaching a level that historically signals a bounce, which could be on the horizon for the top crypto asset by market cap. As he shares here, Bitcoin RSI has reached March 2020 levels, and he goes on to share, RSI reaching March 2020 levels represents a best case scenario for Bitcoin coin bottom being very close. However, RSI levels dipped much lower in 2015 and 2018 to reach a bear market bottom. Should RSI levels go lower, black higher low could be a point of reversal as an asset's RSI is a momentum indicator measuring recent prices to determine whether it's oversold or overbought in a specific time frame. And according to the crypto analyst, the previous three times that Bitcoin's RSI dipped to the area it's in near now, a bear market bottom was found igniting a recovery. As shared here, Bitcoin RSI is now entering a period that has historically preceded outsized returns on investment for long-term investors. Previous reversals from this area include January 2015, December 2018 and March 2020, all bear market bottoms. Now, Rec Capital says the Bitcoin's RSI recently reached that same level it was in in March of 2020 before Bitcoin kicked off a rally that saw it climb up all the way through to the end of the year. And before I break down next story of the day, MicroStrategy has no intention to sell their Bitcoin, says their company CFO, as well as Trader predicts crypto market will mimic the 2018 bear season and shares how high Bitcoin could go before nuking lower. But first, I want to remind you to smash that show more button right below this video in the description for a detailed analysis of what's going on in the crypto market. This goes for all 1,200 plus videos right here on my YouTube channel. Also, some very helpful resources for you to plug into, including my crypto merch store, live at merch.cryptonewsalerts.net. Also, be sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to turn on all notifications to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every single day, just like this. And of course, you can follow me on all the major podcasts and platforms from Spotify, home of the Joe Rogan Experience, to Apple's iTunes and Google Play. And if you're listening to the pod, be sure to check out the YouTube channel at cryptonewsalerts.net for the full premium experience with video. And of course, you can follow me on TikTok, Telegram, Facebook, and Twitter. So wherever you're at, be sure to plug in and follow me there. But all right, now let's break down our next story of the day. MicroStrategy has no plans to sell its Bitcoin, despite Bitcoin's recent bearish price action across the past six months. According to the company's chief financial officer, MicroStrategy CFO Andrew Kang tells the Wall Street Journal that MicroStrategy shareholders are aligned with the company's strategy and have been pressured it to sell its Bitcoin holdings. Quoting him here, at this time, we do not have any intention to sell. There are no scenarios that I am aware of in which we would sell. Very powerful words. Now, MicroStrategy has purchased a total of 129,218 Bitcoin for about $3.97 billion, equaling an average price of around $30,700 per coin, according to Michael Saylor, the company's chief executive. Now, Kang says that the company doesn't plan to change course just because of the recent crypto price downtick, which has seen Bitcoin fall substantially from all-time highs along with the rest of the crypto markets. Quoting him here, some of the more recent volatility was certainly around some of the 
activity outside of Bitcoin. For us, we monitor that from a market perspective, but there isn't anything fundamental to Bitcoin that we believe presents any issues against our strategy. Now, Sailor, meanwhile, continues to publicly extol the virtues of the King Crypto, as he shares here. In a global bear market, there is no place to hide, but there is one place to stand. Hashtag Bitcoin. That's right. And now let's break down our final story of the day. A widely followed analyst and trader says that the crypto market could copy its 2018 playbook. Synonymous trader Altcoin Sherpa tells his 175,000 Twitter followers that this year could very well turn out to be a repeat of 2018 with a few differences with regard to the infrastructure and diversity of digital assets. Quoting the crypto analysts right here, 2022 could very well look like 2018. Given the amount of time we could chop around for, I do think that the market is more mature these days than before though. Overall market structure for trading is better, plus DEXs, plus NFTs, plus gaming, plus new usable chains. And according to Altcoin Sherpa, Bitcoin took 336 days in 2018 to hit a bottom after reaching a 2017 high, while altcoins took even longer. And the crypto analyst and trader says that since Bitcoin hit a new all-time high in November of 2021, roughly 189 days have passed, or about half the time it took the flagship crypto to bottom out during the 2018 bear season, as he shares here. One thing that sucked about 2018 was the amount of time it took to draw down. We're about halfway there right now. If you count alt slash Bitcoin, coin pairs. It was even longer. 2019 was ish for many of those. Now, the synonymous crypto analyst says Bitcoin could appreciate by over 15% from the current levels before crashing. As he shares here, something like this would make sense for me. More people getting bullish on the bearish retest of $35 to $40,000 and then price nuking lower. How low do you feel we're likely to go for this cycle? Let me know your honest thoughts in the comments right down below. And now for a quick recap of what I covered with you here in today's show. Bitcoin ends the week on the edge as the S&P 500 officially enters a bear market, as well as central bankers Bello Bitcoin and El Salvador's Bitcoin Beach, as well as top crypto analysts, says this historically accurate metric signals that a Bitcoin bottom could be near, as well as MicroStrategy confirms that they have no intention to sell Bitcoin, and Trader predicts that the crypto market will mimic the 2018 bear season and shares how high the Bitcoin price can go before nuking lower. Where do you feel the Bitcoin price is likely to go next. Let me know in the comments right down below. Now for the top three comments from yesterday's episode. Jenny Jones wrote, yikes, 40 billion invested in Luna. Now my heart is bleeding for these people. JV, thanks for the shout out. Really great show today. So much ongoing, amazing crypto news always reminds me while I'm in the space. Yes, indeed. So sad to witness the Luna death spiral, which has affected literally millions of crypto investors worldwide. This is why we buy Bitcoin, fam. And hodl. And our next featured comment comes from Bitbud, 35 to 38,000. Then we drop to 22K. Always appreciate your predictions, fam. In the meantime, keep stacking them sats. Now for our third and final featured comment comes from Tony McDowell. Absurd. I like Rich Dad, but he knows very little about crypto and Bitcoin. Predicting the crash of all gold stable coins does not make you an expert. Many, many others predicted the crash. You make a great point, fam. And to be featured on tomorrow's episode, drop me a comment right down below.